This is episode number 106 of the Guns Magazine podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting folks who make up the world of shooting, hunting, and the firearms industry. First, before we get started with this episode, let's take just a second to talk about our pair of great sponsors. The presenting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast is Hodgden. Hodgden's family of 777 powders, available in granular powder and pellets, gives muzzle-loading enthusiasts a quick-cleaning, low-odor black powder substitute for rifle and pistol applications. To learn more about 777 powder, visit Hodgden.com. Our supporting sponsor is IMR Powder. IMR strives to bring new and legendary powders to reloaders in a never-ending process of innovation. Whether you're reloading your rifle, pistol, shotgun, or muzzleloader, IMR has a powder to fit your needs. Learn more about this great portfolio of powders at imrpowder.com. My talk today is with Shailene Kiner, the president of Headhunters Northwest. They're a firm specializing in recruitment within and for the firearms industry. Shailene and her firm help match executives, sales, marketing, and other professionals to some of the biggest names in the gun world. In our chat today, Shailene offers some thoughts on how to get into the gun biz and some ideas about how to make yourself more attractive to potential employers. Now here's Shailene Kiner on getting hired in the gun industry. Well, good afternoon, Shailene. Good afternoon, Brent. Uh, You're out in South Dakota. How are things out that way? It is lovely getting cold. Um, Wintertime is upon us very shortly. I expect snow soon. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I hate to hear that, but it's it's getting to be that time. But of course, that means it's hunting season. So there's good stuff with it, too. Shailene is the president of Headhunters Northwest, and that is not a uh, cannibal related firm. They are help people get a job and they focus on the outdoors and shooting industry. And I got to say that uh, in my personal life, the the question I get all the time is, hey, you've got a really cool job. And I say, yes. And they go, now, now, how do I get a job in the industry? And I thought it would be a great time to talk to somebody whose job is to find jobs. Now, let's let's talk about the scope of this. We're not talking about finding a job at the local gun store or the local mega mart selling, you know, ammunition or whatever. You guys help professionals find jobs in the industry. And I'm assuming everything from the executive suite to marketing sales, those kind of things. Um, is that pretty much what you do or am I missing something there? Well, I think you're close. You're right on track. So we actually are hired by the companies to find people. So a little bit opposite. We do absolutely work with a lot of people that are looking for work or happy in their jobs, but want us to keep them in mind for the right opportunity. We're actually hired by the manufacturers, the distributors, the trade associations, any organization that specializes in products for the shooting sports industry. So all of those companies, um, anything you can think of, premium names, either have hired us or are certainly waiting on the list and wanna hire us. And we work with folks um, like yourself or people who are leaving other industries that are firearms enthusiasts and want to join our group of people that we get to work with every day. What kind of jobs do you help folks find? We're hired to find board members, executives, marketing people, sales people, director level, individual contributors, design engineers. We're always looking for design engineers that have a mechanical engineering background. We're we're looking for a wide variety of people. Generally, these are individual contributors on up. They would not normally be the folks that are um, CNC operators just because they're harder for us to find, Mm -hmm. which I know HR individuals um, who specialize in this would tell us that's who they're struggling with the most. And we we do our best to help. But 
our main focus would be more along the lines of managers, directors, executives, and any specialty in the industry, anything hard to find. We specialize in a lot of relocations and find talent in very hard to hard to fill areas, for instance, areas that are geographically challenging. <laughs> you know, I've got to take a, a sidebar here. Okay, how did you get your job? This is a pretty unusual career path. How did you end up here? Totally by accident. I'm so lucky. <laughs> Never does a single day feel like work. I absolutely love what I do. I accidentally fell into recruiting. And then when we went through the recession of 2008, I stopped everything I was doing and sat there and thought, what do I want to do now? And I moved my company from an accounting and finance firm specialty niche into the shooting sports industry and have never looked back. I absolutely love it. It's all we specialize in. Well, you've kind of had a, uh, you shifted horses a little bit. So why is the shooting industry uh, what you focused on? Well, I'm a user of the products and I love the people. The people in our industry are down to earth. Um, very real individuals that by and large support each other and they will turn around and support their competitor when their competitor needs help. You know, it's a very unique industry that way and that I feel like I'm part of a big family and I'm just very honored when I have the opportunity to rub elbows with people who are as family focused as I am just downheartedly great people. Yeah. And I have to agree, you hear stories like that, and they're generally not shared in the news, but you're always hearing of people and companies in the industry helping out what are technically competitors to get through a rough stretch. And that stuff goes on almost every day. It really does. It is remarkable. You know, even though they're competitors, um, you know, we just came from NASGW um, trade show within the industry and it was just incredible to see competitors cheering for other competitors that won the um, re the rewards or I guess the trophies that they hand out and they vote on it by the members. So here they are voting, voting for each other and supporting each other. And it's not uncommon for one manufacturer to reach out to another one when they need specific products or or help and collaboration. It's just really a unique industry. Absolutely. Well, now this question, is it can be excessively broad, so we're going to try not to get too far down in the weeds. And I'm not talking about the technical expertise you need to be a mechanical engineer versus a marketing person, but generally speaking, if somebody is looking for a job in our industry, what are the things they need to start thinking about in terms of what they need to do to be higher, higher, <laughs> I can't Hire-able? say that, higher, higher, <laughs> wow, that's pretty, cl- pretty comical, hireable is what I was trying to say. Well, I think if they're already in the industry, they just need to really focus on what it is they want to do with their career, because really, you want to start with the end, and you look backwards, and then build your career that direction. If it's someone who is not in our industry and they just really want to work in our industry, get familiar with our products. Attend the trade shows. There's plenty of trade shows that people can attend that aren't industry specific, that they can get to know our products and get to know the manufacturers. And you you would be surprised how many people get hired that are from outside of our industry. You just have to focus in on what your dream is and continue building on that. Wouldn't you say that most of the folks that are work in our industry are very, uh, they're aficionados. They really like shooting sports and want to be part of it as opposed to in other industries. It doesn't matter if you're selling, you know, uh, laundry detergent or uh, tires. But here, for the most part, by and large, most folks really want to be part of this industry. Yeah, no doubt. I agree. They they need to be passionate about it and they need to be willing to give back. This isn't an industry that tolerates takers. Mm -hmm. They don't have to. This is an industry that supports givers. So if you're out there hunting and you're volunteering your time to bring in new hunters and teach 
local youth or or participate in shooting sports in your own local area, it's going to go a long way towards these employers. Yeah. So when you're looking at applicants, um, do you see any common shortfalls or, you know, things like unrealistic expectations or or things like that, that you would counsel folks, hey, don't do this when you're starting to get into this process? Oh, gosh, I think we all need to learn patience, you know. <laughs> what are you, <laughs> you talking know, about? It's, it's hard. Yeah, I know, right? It's hard. It is really hard for our hiring managers to hire people to come into their team. We we all want to hire the right person. And it's very hard when you're talking about so many generational gaps because communication is the one single thing that is a a common ground that we all share and have shortcomings. And I think if we would all be more forgiving and trusting of our fellow man, we probably would all get a lot farther ahead. Exactly. Has your job changed? Um, And I say this because I work with folks of all different ages and every generation has its uh, stereotypes. Has your job had to change? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Do I, do you really want to point out how old I am already? (laughs) (laughs) Um, You you know, it's gone from, I I dare to say gone from the days of the fax machine to now the days of texting, you know, it, it is imperative in our world and for what our company does to be flexible, to change and nimble. And we certainly do a lot more business over text message every year than we ever, I ever would have dreamed we would. Yeah. Aside from the communication methods, I mean, are folks, job applicants pretty much the same? Or, you know, they say that, for example, the youngest generation, they're more concerned about quality of life and experiences Mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe my generation, which was looking at, at dollars and cents and where you'd have to relocate to. Gosh, I think you're so right. I mean, my generation, I would say, you know, I... I live to work and I think a lot of other generations maybe are more, they, you know, work to live. Yeah. And so you just have to take people at where do they feel reward? What's important to them? And it is very different, but I think we can interlace those things. It's just a matter of balance. And with COVID, of course, it's forced us all to look inside our companies and find out how we can adapt and change. So perhaps there are some benefits we've seen from that. Yeah. So how is it that you find your job seekers? How, how do you make the connection between your client and say, I'm looking for you know, a marketing job? Well, we have a lot of tools, of course, um, at our disposal, and we invest in our own training inside our company for our specialty niche, but we actually employ sourcing people that go out and actually do initially contact folks um, to get a hold of them and build a relationship with people long before they're looking for work, hopefully. Yeah. And that way we can keep in mind when we have a job that we're hired to fill, like a marketing position, we might know three people right off the bat that have asked us to keep them in mind for when this type of a role comes available. But there's also our social media presence is very important to us. And we try really hard to work on that. It's just a constant love hate thing. And then we do also um, attend the industry trade shows. So when we go to trade shows, we're we're busy from morning until night and until I'm flat worn out (laughs) meeting with people. And it's just a wonderful thing because you can't replace that in person. That in person contact has. All of those communication pieces that aren't words on a resume. It's just really important to meet people in person, if at all possible. Definitely. When you're talking about changing jobs within the industry, folks that have been there for a while, what do you think the primary motivation is? Are people looking for more money? Are they dissatisfied with their current situation or it just a million and one different reasons? That's a really good question. Really good question. And I think people... I think it's hard for employers to keep people challenged. It's not as simple as the sales dollars. We're very complex beings, humans. Mm -hmm. And I think 
the employers that offer the most challenge and the most encouragement and the most appreciation are the ones that retain their employees longest. The people who start looking um, passively and give us a call, a lot of times they're just not satisfied in their role. They want they want to learn more. They want more opportunity to succeed. Yeah. So you typically represent the company looking for somebody. What do you look for? I assume you develop a pool of applicants or you've kind of got a, a few folks that in mind that might fit this. What are you looking for before you send them on to your, your client? Well, when we meet with our, our clients, the manufacturers or company or, you know, distributors, wherever they are, we go down a careful um, list of requests and learn what their company is like, learn about their culture, what are the goals for the next five years for the company overall, the goals for the position. Those are the magic things that we need to know what this person's going to look like, sound like, and what what is our pool? Do we have someone that's looking for a challenge like that? When we know what those things are, then we can go out and identify the skill sets are the easy part. It's the culture that has to match. Yeah. And it's the op- the upside of that opportunity that's very difficult to put in writing. It's that thing that you can't measure. It's that 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 gift, that light in someone's eye that <laughs> you know is going to be a good match with the team. It's very it's very hard to find, but they're out there. Lots of great people out there. It's just a matter of putting them in the right place at the right time. Yep. Well, the industry has certainly been topsy-turvy over the last two years, probably some of the the best two years maybe we've ever had. Money is coming in like crazy. I know a lot of manufacturers are hiring both on the floor and in the the executive type uh, areas. So has your business boomed or is it cyclical or is it just pretty much about the same year in and year out? I mean, what's your view from your position? Our business has consistently grown year over year. We took the time of COVID without trade shows to travel to, to build our infrastructure so that we could grow our team to better serve our, our clients it is always a race to make sure we can meet their expectations, and it is very busy. Um, we we just keep waiting for the ammunition manufacturers to ship us pallets of ammo. You know, I've tried to negotiate that, and no one will take me up on it. <laughs> well, from an editor's standpoint, I have the exact same problem. <laughs> Why won't anyone ship and here we've worked with um, some of the manufacturers and placed, you know, their VP of operations. And I said, gosh, you know, <laughs> we placed a VP of operations and your plant managers. Where, where's our pallet? And they exactly. just laughed. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I seem to be getting the same thing, too. So I guess <laughs> I guess we're not special. But, you know, you helped them get the job. You'd think maybe they would. You'd think, you know, right? a box or two at least. I know. <laughs> right. I mean, you'd think if you're going to want to write a really nice review for them, they just ship you a pallet. But for some reason, they just think they can sell all this ammunition. <laughs> and by all means, they do. So yeah, I'm happy for them. Definitely. When you're talking to folks that are thinking about coming over from, you know, I don't know, the auto industry or whatever and and move into shooting because they they enjoy it and, you know, it's something they want to be part of. Is there anything you caution them on about the industry or the jobs in the industry? What what I've seen the biggest, I'd say the biggest difference is we're selling a product that is a passion product, that is a product that gains value in our gun safes that we use every day that we carry with us every day these aren't products that you wear out and you throw it away and you go buy a new one i mean i guess i'm sure there there are people that wear <laughs> wear their you know firing pins out yeah. but um it is very different this is a legacy product that that we buy and we we keep in our safe and we we put it into our will or our trust for our kids and our grandkids. This isn't, it's not the same. It's not, I mean, I love my new truck that I bought, but I'm probably not going to keep that and will it to my grandkids. <laughs> exactly. So it, is, it is very different. It is a very different product. These are people that are, I mean, their whole lives center around this. At least mine does. Yeah. Overall looking at folks that you've helped maybe move into the industry, 
do they stick with it? Uh, or again, it just kind of depends on the situation and the person. Well, it depends. A lot of people do really well in it. And other people I've seen come into our industry, not, not people we've placed, but other people that have come into our industry, um, even executive CEOs, that um, they think that this is just like, um, you know, making pencils or yeah. making candles or whatever they, they did in the past. And it's not. And, you know, they, they pretty quickly self-select out. Well, I'm I'm going to express an opinion here now, and oh. it's something, <laughs> and um, it seems to me that it's a pretty common thing that firearms companies start out uh, generally small, a CEO typically, or a couple of guys that are really passionate about making something, guns, gun parts, whatever, and if they become successful, then they start hiring more folks, and at some point, they start hiring um, the derogatory term is suits, and mm-hmm. we've all met some of those folks that, yeah. as you said, it doesn't matter if they're selling, you know, trucks or candles or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think they last in the industry very long. Uh, what's your experience been with that kind of thing? That, well, they move on and they don't come back. You know, I mean, there's some, there is, there are CEOs and executive suits, if you will that have come into some of our bigger companies and just never make it back in because I don't know, they just don't fit the mold. And yet we're a very welcoming industry. Absolutely. You know, I I think we're humble. And I think the difference between the folks that are humble and the folks that aren't is, is why they're self-selected out. Yeah. You know, I, when I came into this industry, I didn't know a lot of people and I was very humble and I asked for help and I've, I just have never, stop thanking those people. And I never will, because without them, we wouldn't be growing and we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. And I think a lot of times um, people forget to be humble and have gratitude. Yeah. You know, I was just sitting here thinking of, of all the folks I know in the industry. In the years you've been doing this, it seems like people are, are jumping jobs more and more these days. And we know the younger generation tends to do that, whereas mm-hmm. our grandparents tended to work for one company and they retired from that company, you know, from the day they got hired in as the janitor or whatever. Is that an accurate perception that people of all ages do jump jobs more or does it just seem that way? No, I think you're right, but I see value in this. And I think, you know, I think that's one thing that maybe the older generation, which I could easily include myself in. Um, could see value because when these folks work somewhere for two or three years and they go to another place and maybe it's five years or maybe it's seven years, they're bringing new ideas from a whole nother culture and another company. And that can really be an advantage Mm -hmm. to companies. The problem is if you stay somewhere 30 years, when our folks had that, and, and that's common, my father was at the same company you know, my whole life as a child, then I think things didn't change as quick as they do now. We're not living in the same time. I mean, I can hardly keep up with my own (laughs) software programs. Yeah. You know, so I think it's good that they move. I think we should not discount people if they're only somewhere for two years. I don't think that's a bad thing, honestly, because if you if you get benefit from them in your company and you make an extraordinary profit off a great idea they had, isn't it worth them going saying, hey, this is going to be great for two years. I've learned everything I feel like I want to learn here. I'm going to move on. But what if you what if you were okay with that? I mean, if your company's making money, I think we have to be a little more open minded. And that's not true of all positions, but I think it's a mistake to discount people. If there's good reason and you see growth, if it's someone that is just a retread that doesn't make successful decisions and make numbers at the company prior or the one prior to that, then I don't think it's then I don't think you should hire them. Hmm. Interesting thought. Well, I have to ask you to put on your your crystal ball and your your mystic robes. <laughs> where oh <dear. laughs> where are things going? Uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious to most of us in the, in the industry that video conferencing and all that have changed things. Uh, there's talk maybe trade shows are going to go away, but it it still a lot of it depends on working with other folks and and getting out and seeing folks. But 
where do you think things are going as as a whole? Well, I would say prior to our trip last week to NASGW that was held this year in Columbus, Ohio, I would have said I'm not really sure. But when we went to Columbus, Ohio for NASGW, it was just an amazing, resounding, exciting environment. And I, I wouldn't have said NASGW is the most exciting trade show <laughs> I've been to. And I love it. It's my favorite trade show because you can have a conversation. You can right. actually, you know, and it's industry only. And I'll tell you what, it was exciting. People were smiling and laughing and wow. and it was great. I mean, the, the camaraderie and the just it just filled the soul. It just really spilled the soul. And it was and I don't think there was anyone there that I spoke with that didn't feel the same way. Wow. So I really can't imagine, even though these shows are expensive and maybe maybe companies just need to get a smaller booth. Maybe we don't need six stories. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe maybe that's the way these companies can save money. They don't have to spend, you know, millions of dollars. Maybe they get a smaller booth at SHOT Show. <laughs> but I can't imagine and I don't want to imagine a life without SHOT Show and NASGW. Yeah. It costs my company a lot of money to go there, but it's worth it to me because these are people. And that is, after all, what we do for a living. Exactly. So I hope it doesn't disappear because I'm going. I'll be there in January. <laughs> I've already got my ticket booked. <laughs> Excellent. And that's what we are, aren't we? I mean, that's what makes our industry so phenomenal. That's why people want to work with us in our industry, because we genuinely become friends and care about each other because most of us are all headed the same direction. And it's very unique. Yep. Well, you know, I, you've kind of echoed what my thought has been, because there's a lot of folks that are saying, oh, trade shows are going away and blah, blah, blah. I, I think remote working, remote meetings, all that kind of stuff, remote. They're more important now than ever. Exactly. But I don't think you can completely get away from the personal connection. And the, the word that I've not even brought up, and I think you did once, but when I give advice to folks, networks. Building your networks, that's how you get a job in any industry and how you tend to get ahead is you got to know a lot of folks and you got a lot of make sure that they they feel good about you. So you just got to be yeah. a good person and know a lot of folks. Yeah, networking is critical and we have wonderful tools like LinkedIn. You know, I'm on LinkedIn. Our recruiters are on LinkedIn. Our company has LinkedIn. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. We have more than I can even remember. <laughs> and we have our websites, of course, but at the end of the day, we're humans, you know, and humans need personal touch. Yep. And we crave personal touch as humans. And that's what the trade shows give us that your Zoom calls and your, you know, none of that email, text messaging, so much is lost in translation. And we, I just can't imagine that we humans won't value personal touch, the handshake, the hug, the hello. Those are things that I think has become more valuable than ever. Exactly. Well, Shailene, it's been great. A lot of great information. Hopefully, if folks are looking to get in the industry or, or change ships in the industry, how can they find out more about Headhunters Northwest, your company? Well, I appreciate that. They can um, find us on the internet. And we are at headhuntersnw.com, Headhunters Northwest. And you can find us on social media. You can find us just about anywhere. Um, I think you can, you can reach out to me personally. And um, my, we have an email on our website that you can certainly email us directly. I think it's info at headhuntersnw. And our phone number is 605-600. 1709. Well, excellent. It's been a great talk and I look forward to, I'll look you up when we all get to the shot show in January and, and we'll, uh, we'll have a chat there. So I appreciate you talking to me, Shailene. Thanks for the opportunity. I love your podcast. Thank you very it's much. My favorite. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, if you want to work in the gun business, I hope my talk with Shailene Kiner gave you a few tips you can use. 
And with that, I hope you're enjoying the Guns Magazine podcast. Guns Magazine was first on the newsstand, and today we're bringing you the most interesting chats in the gun world. If you've got any questions or comments about the show, please email me. That's editor at gunsmagazine.com. Make sure you subscribe to us on your favorite podcast directory, YouTube, and of course, at gunsmagazine.com. And while you're online, don't forget to check out our great sister publications, American Handgunner Magazine at AmericanHandgunner.com, AmericanCop.com, and our numerous special editions available on our websites. Most of all, while you're online, I'd also appreciate it if you'd share a favorite episode or some kind words on your own social media. And finally, don't forget to check out the presenting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast, Hodgden Powder, along with the supporting sponsor, IMR Powder. See their complete lineup of great powders at Hodgden.com or imrpowder.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For the entire staff at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting.